Welcome to Chapter 3, The Asian Contribution. Now, the origins of the Chinese civilization are also a great mystery, as was the Mesopotamian origins. But, just like the Sumerians and the Egyptians, the innovation and advances that the Chinese made were pivotal in the history of graphic design. Among the many innovations of the ancient Chinese were the compass, gunpowder, calligraphy, and paper. Which of these inventions do you feel is the most important to Western civilization? And I want you to be able to support your answer. Now, we'll talk about calligraphy. Calligraphy came around the scene about 1800 BC, and it is what we would call a purely visual language, just like Egyptian hieroglyphics. So I'd like you to tell me what was the inspiration for these early pictographic forms. And keep in mind that aesthetic considerations were an interest to the Chinese from the early development of their writing. Also keep in mind that Chinese calligraphy is not alphabetical and that every symbol is composed of a number of differently shaped lines within an imaginary bounding box. A single character in Chinese calligraphy is called a logogram. I want you to be able to define this term and give me an English equivalent as an example. Also, note from your reading that there is no direct relationship with the written and spoken Chinese language. I want you to be able to tell me why. There are five basic forms of Chinese calligraphy. The first is called Chai Ku Wen. The second is Qin Wen. The third is Shao Chuan. The third, or fourth rather, is Li Shu. And the fifth is Chen Shu. I want you to be able to tell me what are the general characteristics and facts surrounding each form of calligraphy. For example, Chai Ku Wen is also known as bone or shell script because it was mostly written on bones and shelves and it was an ancient form of writing closely bound to the art of divination and was mainly pictographic in nature. On this slide, I want to show you the evolution of these early forms of Chinese calligraphy. So what I have pictured here is called a lai, which is a three-legged pottery vessel. And here you see, from top to bottom, the evolution of the character lai. First, from top to bottom, is chai ku wen, then the middle one is qin wen, and the bottom one, or the modern form, is chen shu. Now let's talk about the invention of paper. Dynastic records indicate the inventor of paper was Sai Lung, a high government official in 105 AD. Now, whether he really invented paper or if he perfected a current invention is not known. In earlier times, Chinese wrote on bamboo slats or wooden strips. What is important for you to note is that Tsai Lun's process for making paper stayed almost unchanged until 19th century England mechanized it. So, paper was not only made for scrolls or documents, but was also used for wrapping paper, wallpaper, toilet paper, and napkins by the Chinese. Now, in this image that we have here, we see the visual design qualities of calligraphy. I want you to examine the image and explain what graphic qualities are demonstrated by this composition. And I'm going to give you a hint. For this image, I want you to think in terms of bone, blood, and muscle, as the Chinese would describe the graphic quality of their brush strokes. Now that we've talked about paper and calligraphy, let's talk about the origins of printing. There are two main ideas for the origins of printing. The first idea concerning the origin of printing centers around the engraved seals used to make identification. These seals are called Chinese chops. It is believed that these evolved into printing. The type of printing is called relief printing. So, what I want you to do is define relief printing and I want you to define chop and give the uses and characteristics for Chinese chops. In these images on this particular page you're going to see along the top a chop, it's inked on the bottom and then it's pressed upon a piece of paper and then along the bottom are examples of how chops were used to imprint names of owners or viewers of this particular painting. The second theory around the origins of printing focuses on the early Chinese practice of making inked rubbings from inscriptions carved in stone. Here's an example 
of a Chinese relief tomb sculpture and the rubbing on the piece of paper. And then here is another example um, of a Chinese ink rubbing. This is the Diamond Sutra from 868 AD. And what I want you to know is that this is the oldest surviving printed manuscript. The high quality of the printing of this Diamond Sutra suggests that the craft of printing had progressed to an excellent level by the time that this manuscript was produced. So, to conclude this slide, I want you to be able to describe the process of ink rubbings. How was it accomplished? Now, block printing was rapidly developing within the Chinese culture for many different purposes. Can you tell me what are some examples of printed items from these culture? And then pick one of those and tell me what was the impact of that one. And then here's an example from a medical herbal guide on the left and another example on the right of Chinese playing cards. I want you to identify what graphic characteristics do you notice for each one of these images. Give me some similarities or some contrasts. The Chinese also invented movable type. Around 1045 AD, the Chinese alchemist Fai Sheng extended the process of block printing by developing the concept of movable type. I want you to list the limitations to the Chinese concept of movable type. And in order to do that, you're going to have to contrast it to Western topography, as in the kind of topography that was invented by Johann Gutenberg. So to conclude Chapter 3, The Asian Contribution, I want you to summarize the Chinese contributions to the evolution of visual communications. Now, during Europe's thousand-year medieval period, the Chinese inventions of paper and printing spread slowly westward, arriving in Europe as the Renaissance began.